these scenarios are not predictive of the future rather they're supposed to be a plausible outcomes that will be really provocative so people can think about the drivers and whether the outcomes are actually desirable i would set up this global government for the internet by saying that in the us at least we just sort of assumed that i c t industry media companies and n g o s would continue to be the major drivers of policy on the internet but this is an alternate scenario it's a scenario where businesses and citizens demand that governments working together move in and take center stage at managing the global internet uh, and why do they do it for the drivers that we talked about here i call it sort of a perfect storm of converging forces here where consumers have lost trust in content and commerce mostly because of fraud that's run rampant the businesses can't handle the losses anymore of the fraud that falls on them plus the lawsuits that have been coming in where they're sued over user generated content and sued over privacy problems and then governments at the same time are actually having some success at closely working together to thwart the terrorist attacks they've even worked together in this future scenario at helping to solve some of the aspects of global climate change maybe they've worked together to help to solve some of the financial crisis the global financial crisis that hit us just in the, uh, in the year 2010 so those three drivers together bring us to the next slide which is what does the world look like in 2020 well the internet by 2020 despite the same similar set of drivers that Iran had is not islands but one giant continent that's closely managed by coordinated government regulators they're overseeing online content and commerce and the governments and businesses have begun to pick up on that by requiring biometric authentication before people get online in the scenarios that we've handed out you'll see the details in there but we also talked about how online publishers of content and user generated content are, are liable they're sued now when anybody posts a YouTube video that violates some aspect of, of law or, or provokes a civil suit. You need an online license just to go and use the Internet. That's the world in 2020, and our discussants on the next slide had a uniform reaction. They said, by all means, avoid this scenario. We, we needed to do everything we could. The other reaction they had with the, the scenario seemed a little bit too plausible, right? So with respect to avoiding it, we said that there are huge barriers to entry and barriers to innovation, particularly for small firms, under a heavily regulated, globally coordinated Internet. We did suggest, too, that many governments would probably lack competency to manage the Internet, and we know that courts lack the competency to issue rulings coming out of a single case that have sweeping effects on how the Internet runs. Another interesting observation is that, look, good actors, legitimate companies, they follow the rules we have. But under this scenario, if we have a brand new set of global rules, the bad actors, they ignore the current rules. The bad actors will ignore the new rules, too. So, so many times, the new rules that are developed actually won't stop the crime. Finally, we, we did express a lot of concern that it would, have, it would widen the digital divide, if you could just go back one, Marilyn. Yes, sorry. When they said the scenario was too plausible, we had a lot of folks who said, we're already not anonymous online, so some of the scare about biometric identification wasn't new, that this is already happening in some countries, and that the digital divide and frankly, the career preservation inclinations of government bureaucrats and regulators might well lead us down to this path. And then we talked about how to avoid it. Uh, we had four messages. First, for industry. And number one, industry needs to get busy on solving the problems that constituted the drivers that could make this a plausible scenario. There was a, there was a, a loud call on that. It was echoed in our general session that everyone, everyone wanted industry to do more. For governments, we turn to governments and say, please enforce your existing laws before you start worrying about creating brand new laws. Greater enforcement will help. And when new problems arise, try to find multiple solutions as opposed to looking for some silver bullet that will solve it. And please don't overreact to the problem du jour with a brand new set of regulations. With ICANN, we turn to ICANN to say it's something we've been saying for years because all of us are very active there, that ICANN should work very hard to recruit and attract more and more governments to participate in the government advisory committee and for those governments to send more and more high-level people both technical and policy to participate at ICANN good news is some of that's happening since the affirmation of commitments we've seen much greater participation and then finally turning to the IGF we had three pieces of advice for the IGF to avoid the scenario that's here we want the IGF to continue to keep talking focus on capacity building we said that the work of the IGF should as much as possible work with technical groups who are capable of doing a deep dive into the technical solutions that we need to solve some of the problems we address here. And also, 
we came to the realization, look, governments are always going to want to run the Internet. Anything as important as the Internet, governments are going to want to run it. So we needed to just get over it, get used to it, and get busy solving the problems that will help us avoid the scenario.